what I've got here is a sine wave in blue and its spectrum up here in this section up here. And what I'm going to do is acquire the data at one sample per second and see what happens as I increase the frequency of the sine wave. So what I'm going to do here is, is this slider that's right here controls the frequency of the sine wave. And what we're seeing here is, let me expand this so we can see it. What, we can, what, what I see here is, is that the data is getting what I call sparse. And actually, we're doing a really lousy job of seeing what the uh, peaks are. But according to Shannon's theorem, the, the frequency of the sine wave is less than half of the sample rate. And what I've got here is I've got this nasty looking red arrow up here that is at a half of the sample rate. And that's called the Nyquist frequency. And uh, uh, sometimes the, the Shannon's theorem is called the Nyquist theorem. And I'll ex we'll chat later about how that gets confused. But the the critical thing is, is that Shannon's theorem says that if the sine wave is below the Nyquist frequency, then everything is cool. So let's chug on out. There's 2.2 points per cycle. And it takes a lot of imagination to rebuild the blue curve, the true curve, from the digitized data. But Shannon says we can do it. Now I'm going to push on out until I am precisely at the Nyquist frequency. OK. So what I've got here is exactly two points per cycle. And this looks pretty good. It looks pretty cool. It looks like I am re representing the sine wave pretty nicely. But the trouble with this is, that I can get any answer I want by changing the time when I acquire the data during the cycle. So if I were acquiring it at this point, at the points at this point, it looks like zero. If I'm acquiring at these points, it looks like full scale. OK, bottom line here is that I violated Shannon's theorem. I've got an indeterminate answer. So let's chug on out to higher frequency. And what I see now is something that's messy down in the time domain, but in the spectral domain, I've got something goofy going on. My real frequency is going up. When I calculate the spectrum of my digitized data, it's down here at the lower frequency. And when I get further out, we start to see in the time domain what's going on, too. OK? The points are being acquired here, 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 and here. And if I pass a smooth curve through those, I get a nice sine wave. It's at the wrong frequency. In fact, it's at the frequency that's indicated right here in the spectrum. So. I've got a sine wave that's at about, let's put it at 9 tenths of a hertz. Got a sine wave that's at 9 tenths of a hertz, and it actually thinks it's at a tenth of a hertz. Line to me. Let's go on out to precisely one point per cycle. Get it with my cursor there. And what I get then, you can see, is that it looks like a DC signal. And the DC signal its level is again dependent on where I acquire the data during the cycle. OK, let's chug on out. What we see now is the apparent frequency, which is the red spectrum, is starting to increase, but it's still wrong. And we keep on going out. And when I get to the frequency over the sample rate is one and a half, 
and then the apparent frequency starts coming down again. And I get this good looking sine wave, which is just completely wrong. The truth is the blue curve, the red is what my digital data acquisition system thinks is going on. So, what's the bottom line here? If I've got any energy above the Nyquist frequency, what it does is it superimposes itself on top of the data that is correct. The data that's correct is zero in this frequency range. But what I'm getting is energy that has come from somewhere else. And I'm going to use the word folded because that's the right word, has wound up below the Nyquist frequency. Any of you seen this kind of demo before? I'm sure Vesta has. Yeah. It's, you see what's going on? Okay. Don't trust anybody. Okay, so what we're seeing here is the truth is the red curve. I'm sorry. The indication is the red curve. The truth is the black curve. So when I get down in here, now it's telling me the truth. Anytime the energy is above the Nyquist frequency, it's telling me something else. Okay. So when we digitize with lots of points per cycle, we get the right answer. At 2.4 points per cycle, we've got a very sparse looking data set, but Shannon says that everything is still cool. 1.3 points per cycle, I get the wrong answer. And, the, and what I get is that all of this energy that is above the Nyquist frequency actually winds up being down here between zero and the microscope.